this is the Hellenistic bronze sculpture of Eros sleeping. It's likely that it was a religious sculpture that was dedicated at a sanctuary in honor of the gods. The artist has captured a moment where a child, the, the god of love, has just fallen asleep. It's a totally new representation of Eros as this baby, and a sleeping baby. The artist is capturing the, the purity of love, the innocence of love, which is different from how he's portrayed in earlier periods, often as this kind of cruel um, and capricious being who could wound mortals with his arrows, causing burning desire or, or loathing. Here, he's disarmed, really. He's just dropped his bow, and one arrow from the quiver, just by his head. It's so quiet that you don't think of it as so radical, but actually it's very rare and unusual to show God sleeping. It's not something that happened in Greek art very often. From a technical standpoint, the sculpture is, is outstanding. The statue was made in seven pieces. The legs, the arm, the head, the wing, the body, and then the drapery. The statue exhibits incredible naturalism in the way that the wings are folded, closed, like a bird's. The way the flesh falls to the side, his arm just hangs down. In the classical period, children are represented as miniature adults. Here, it's naturalism where a baby is represented as a baby with the extra flesh, the folds of skin, and that sort of doughy quality. Many people think of classical art, they think of the Parthenon sculptures as the high point of Greek art. But for me, the naturalism in this sculpture is remarkable. It's powerful. And it's hard for us even today to understand that because that becomes the paradigm. This super being born out of chaos becomes this baby, this Cupid. It's become a cliche, which is what happens with the great masterpieces. And yet, when you're in the presence of the statue, you, you get it, and you get the power of it. It's a brilliant way to, to capture this innocence and perfection and beauty of love.